as a governance person from one end and also as a political sociologist, I think that what is happening currently uh, should be an opportunity for Ghana's governance or democratic governance to grow uh, in the sense that governance generally is about negotiations. Mm. It is about consensus building. Especially in the democratic system, one thing all of us will have to bear in mind is that, you see, we are within, we are living in a community of communities, okay, where these sub-communities are interest groups, political parties, of which political parties are a major one of them. So in, a, a, in parliament like this, I think that um, there is a need for our leaders, leaders from all the various uh, 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 sections of parliament to work together more, mm. to collaborate together more, mm. uh, to, 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 to work in the interest of Ghana more over there. Yes, they were sent there through political parties, but then when they arrive over there, uh, Ghana must be at the interest of, uh, uh, the interest of Ghana should be foremost. Mm. What I see is that um, rather, yes, there is some kind of power playing where everyone want to uh, show their muscle. Um, let's, not uh, uh, let's not forget that we have the three arms of government. Okay? All the three of them are arms of government. In which case we have the legislature who are involved in lawmaking, approval of projects and decisions for government. We have the executive, the implementation body of government. And then the judiciary, who also takes up the responsibility of adjudicating uh, uh, conflict. And let's not also forget that conflict is a fact of life. Okay, Even in your homes, in our homes, even within the church, there is always conflict. So long as we have individuals, parties with different interests, there will always be conflict. So conflict per se... There is nothing bad about it, but the way the conflict is managed, mm. that is where the issues may come from. Mm. And uh, on this note, let me say that I wish that, on my part, I would wish that in this regard, um, the issue may not have been taken to court in the first place. Mm. So that parliament will be left to use their own processes in order to manage whatever issues had uh, 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 ensued over there. I'm happy that you talked about the fact that you know you would have loved or wished that they hadn't gone to the Supreme Court. Yeah. Maybe for either some in, uh, interpretation or or for a stay yeah. to be to be pronounced. Yes. Now, out of your submission, you've made mentioned about three things, and mm. I like to interrogate them, you know, briefly. Okay. Because I'm happy when you talk about you know conflicts happen eh? because we even have an adage in in, in our local parlance. I say the teeth and the tongue. If it sometimes have definitely yes, but I'll, I'll, they still live together exactly. and they move on. Exactly. Now, would you say, based on what you said earlier mm. about the fact that parliamentarians are voted for on the on the ticket of political parties? Yes. But the basic role that they have to do is to represent the people who voted them. Exactly. Because they are representing the people exactly. from the constituencies exactly. and all that. Exactly. But now when you look at the way the parliamentarians behave, they seem not to put the constituents first, they put their political parties first. How did we get here and can we really change that? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, that is where the, uh, uh, the source of a major problem for parliament. That is what I can see. Uh, how do we do away with that? You see... I would uh, suggest that, yes, they went there on the tickets of 
political parties. But when they get there, uh, we need to work on their, their perceptions, their minds, through training. Okay? They will need to have some form of training to understand that, yes, the party was able to bring me here and I came here because of the party. But then, of course, we wouldn't also say that those parties do not have their own interests. They have certain interests. But these interests will have to be managed. But in a situation where they have leaders and they have whips, yes. who would want to whip them in line because, well, there's some particular line they want them to tow. How does a member of parliament say, well, I'm not going to go that way? They may not go extreme. Uh, uh, they may not go that way to the extreme. But then they, they need to have at the back of their minds national interest and then also the interest of their various constituents. Mm. If this informs their actions over there, I would believe that uh, they may naturally tone down on the partisan. Yes, they have whips. They have whips over there, all right. But the whips are also leaders. So you remember I was talking about the fact that, or I'm, I'm saying that leadership is very critical. The leaders from both sides will have to work together more. Mm. You see, in governance, men or let me say most things will happen behind the scenes than as we see. And that is the area where they need to focus more. Mm. Behind the scene dealings, the negotiations, the collaborations, the talking, the nego yes, they need to do that even more so that when they come publicly or they come to the uh, plenary, um, they will not have too many uh, conflicts amongst them. Mm. One other thing you mentioned, I said you mentioned three, so there's a second one yeah. I want to touch on. Yeah. One other thing you talked about that was the fact that conflicts will always come, yeah. but negotiations are also very key. Yes. And you also mentioned that to you, you think that it wasn't necessary for them to have gone to the Supreme Court yes. because they could easily have managed yes. you know, the situation in Parliament. And yeah, indeed, yeah. if you listen to the speaker mm. yesterday during his press conference, he mentioned mm. it. Yeah. 